Hi, my name is Scott Baird. I'll be providing a tutorial on the mechanics of doing hierarchical modeling. And to, to start with, we've got a model that works and, and is set. What we want to do is take one particular activity and break it down in, into an entirely new model. And we do this so that we can keep our models manageable, make it much easier to work with smaller, smaller pieces of a model. So I'm going to take the inspect activity at this, in this model and break it down into a new model. The first thing that we need to do is we need to create what's called linking names. Linking names are where you're going to send things to in the submodel and where you're going to bring them back from the submodel. And so in this case I put these these linking names out on the screen A and B. I'm also going to put these in the routings that feed into inspect and leave inspect. So if you double click on the routing and go to the connector uh, the name tab we'll go ahead and set this one as A and we'll set the one out as B. Once that's complete, go ahead and double click on the inspect activity and go to the submodel tab. Now, if I was creating a model from scratch, I could just drill down right now, put in a brand new name, and then start building my submodel. In this particular case, I've already got a pre-built model and I'd like to use that. So I'm going to go out and find that pre-built model. I've labeled this submodel S1 inspect and for me that just means that it's submodel number one. I'm using S1 as the name of the model because I'm also going to use that as the prefix for all of the activity names inside this model. So I'll go ahead and select that and hit open. So I'll put that in there and I'll hit the activate button. Now you'll notice that when I hit the activate button that what I've done is I've put a shadow around this and that's how you can tell if you've got submodels attached anywhere along the uh, in your model as you'll see those shadows. Hit the activate button this will then take us to the submodel. In the in the submodel I've got those same linking names and notice again I've placed these out on the layout. Now the reason why I've done that is because in more complex types of models you're gonna find out that this will be a good thing to do. It'll help you to keep track of your particular uh, links that you have in the system and it'll avoid some errors. So I encourage you to do that. But we do the same thing in here is number one is I need to to do the incoming name or the link that links me directly to where things came from in the model above. So I go to the arrival, click on the name tab, put A in there, go to the output that leaves this model and goes directly back up into the upper level model. Now in this model it's it's fairly simple. We've got one input and one output. In a lot of models you'll actually enter somewhere after the start of the model and you'll exit somewhere before the end of the model or maybe in several different places. And so that's why the linking names are important. But same thing, uh, I'll go ahead and put B in the output here. Now notice that once I've done that, that that same information shows up in the header of the dialog. So I don't really have to open this anymore to tell whether or not I've got linking names in there. Once those links are done, I can go ahead and close this and move back up to the upper level. Now just a note about this, the, the names need to be unique for each of the activities both in the main and in the submodels. So in order to avoid any problem with naming conventions, what I've done is I've labeled all my activities with a prefix. I've put S1 since this is the, my first submodel for this model. And so I'll call this S1 Disassemble Housing, S1 Perform Inspect, etc. And that way they won't conflict with the names up above. Okay, once that's done, I go ahead and save this model. You'll always want to make certain that these models run at the sub-level before you actually link them in, that you've validated and tested these models. I'll go ahead and end that and go back up to the upper level. Uh, you'd spend a lot more time validating and verifying the model, making certain that it was correct. Close the model, I'll go back up to the upper level. Now once I'm back up at the upper level, uh, again we've got the shadow here showing us that we've got a sub-model. I can go ahead and save and simulate. Okay, items leave the upper level. They go down into the lower model. When they're finished in the lower model, they go back up to the upper level. So you'll see it go across, go down, finish, go back up, and go back up into the main model. Okay, now everything in the main model in the inspect activity has now been replaced by the, the submodel. All times, all resources, all action logic, all resource connections are now no longer valid in the inspect activity and all that information needs to come from the lower level model. 
There are some simple rules for hierarchical modeling. The first is that the names must be unique. <clears throat> that means that you can't have something called inspect at the upper level and something also called inspect at a sub-level of the model. So all names within the model must be unique. So you saw that I changed the names of the sub-model by adding a prefix to each of the model names. Second, <clears throat> you need to keep the linking names short and simple. We see people try and put in different types of names for example, uh, submodel 2A in, submodel 2A out. And what we find is is that <clears throat> the output from one is the input of another model. And so that kind of falls apart right off the bat. So it's, it's actually simpler just to use single character or double characters, you know, AA, AB, something like that. Keep them short and simple. They, they have to be the same case in one level versus the, the other level. So use a capital A for in the upper level model, a capital A in the lower level model. Before you put the pieces together, make certain that the models run. It doesn't get any easier to validate these models once they're put back, uh, once they're linked together. So make certain that you do complete validation on the submodels before you put those together, which means you're going to put an arrival into those models and test the model using what you think is the right arrivals from the upper level model. <clears throat> Always return to the same model that you left from. Uh, it's just an easy way to build your models for these simple types of models. When you're building the models, make certain that you close the submodels when you're done with them. So as you've linked these together, go to the top level model, open from the top level model. When you're done with that model, close the submodel. Now if you leave them both open, you'll learn that you can do this later on, you'll end up making a change to the model and not having that change be reflected in the final model because you, you'll either change it and rename it or you won't save it before you run the model and, and won't understand why it's not working the way it's supposed to. And the last rule that I'm going to give to you is that <clears throat> resources can only reside on one level of the model, which means that I can't have a person called worker at the upper level and a person called worker at the lower level. But I can use get and free statements in the action logic to be able to accomplish that. I hope this was helpful to you. If you have questions, don't hesitate to call technical support. This is how you do hierarchical modeling or submodeling. Thanks for joining us.